I think it's really important to understand the difference between COVID-19 and ordinary influenza. Ordinary influenza causes an outbreak every winter and it always leads to a certain number of serious illnesses and deaths, particularly in people who are elderly or who have underlying health uh, problems. Standard measure of the transmissibility of influenza is the average number of cases that are infected by each person who's infected. And typically with influenza, this is between 1.1 and one and a half. So on average, each person with flu will infect one to two other people. That is significantly higher in COVID-19. In other words, it's easier to catch COVID-19 than it is to catch flu. The second important difference is that it's more serious when you catch it. <clears throat> the mortality rate and the morbidity rate, the illness and death rate from COVID-19 are both significantly greater than they are from ordinary influenza. So it's easier to catch it and it's worse when you get it. Um, washing of hands is extremely important and really does make a significant difference, particularly if they're washed properly with uh, either soap or some disinfectant like an alcohol jan uh, hand gel. Wearing of masks is a little more uh, difficult because if people are not used to wearing masks, then they will often handle them more often. And touching the, of the face with hands that may be contaminated can actually increase the risk of catching COVID-19. The other thing about wearing masks is that it can be quite effective in stopping, uh, if I wear a mask, I'm less likely to infect someone else. One of the most difficult things about COVID-19, which is very different from SARS, is that people who have got it even before they develop any symptoms, before they become ill, they can transmit it. And that is part of the reason that it has spread so quickly. So for a couple of days before people even start developing a cough or a fever, they are able to transmit the virus to someone else. This makes it spread very, very quickly. Now, social distancing has been shown to be the most important thing that has limited the spread in um, uh, the countries that have controlled it well, that is uh, in the latter stages in China, in Wuhan, but also in Singapore and Hong Kong. So social distancing is really, really important. Um, in countries that have been late to adopt it, and I regret to say that the US and UK and Italy and other countries in Europe have been too slow to adopt this. The other thing that really makes a big difference to the efficiency of control is a very rapid and widespread testing for the infection. It is clear that where the testing has been very, very um, uh, aggressively pursued, uh, even in people who are contacts of infected people who have not developed the, in any symptoms, such as in Singapore and in Hong Kong, this very, very rapid and thorough tracing of contacts and testing has been extremely effective in slowing down the rate of spread of the virus. It is absolutely clear from the data everywhere else in the world that it is important to institute these measures as soon as possible. And I would be very, very surprised if they don't have to be maintained for more than two weeks. They will have to be maintained probably for at least two months. It's now thought that the um, even with the introduction of these measures, it's likely that the peak of infection will occur in each country after about two or three months. And it will be very difficult 
for the economy and for individuals. But if we don't do this, the illness and death rate will increase. And very importantly, if they increase too quickly, they overload the healthcare system and it will be impossible to treat all the people who develop serious symptoms. What that means is that it will increase the death rate still further. There are already the preliminary trials of some vaccines, but they are the very preliminary ones, which mean they're simply testing to see whether they are safe. In other words, whether they cause any adverse reactions. If they don't cause any adverse reactions, then the next stage is to do a clinical trial to administer them and see whether it has any effect in preventing the infection. It, but all of this, of course, takes time. And unfortunately, it's very unlikely that all of these trials will be complete. Even if they are successful, it will be, important, it will be very unlikely that they will be complete before the peak of the current pandemic is reached. Um, however, it's, um, even, after, even if the trial is successful, the next stage is that the vaccine will have to be manufactured in very large quantities. That also takes a long time. So we're looking at many months before a significant uh, vaccine, even if one is produced now that is shown to be effective, we're looking at months before there would be enough available to be widely distributed.